King Solomon made an extremely wise observation in the book of Ecclesiastes, right at the beginning, when he says on chapter 1 and verses 9 and 10 the following, That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, See, this is new. It has already been in ancient times before us. In other words, Everything that happens today has already happened in the past. History repeats itself, in other words. Here, Solomon is talking about human beings who learn so many things. The human beings are so intelligent in the field of technology. They create new things in the field of art, it creates wonderful things, but in the field of life itself, they seem blind and deaf, they seem ignorant for not learning from the mistakes of the past, with the things that have happened back then, sometimes even in their own lives, and also in the lives of the ancient ones. In the Holy Scriptures, bring many examples of this. Before going to the scriptures, you can observe this easily. For example, in the lives of children with their parents. Those who are parents, you know what I'm talking about. You parent, you made mistakes when you were young, you did things in life that today you know it was a miss, things that were wrong, and today you know better. You know that you shouldn't do those things. And if there was a chance to go back, you wouldn't. You pass this knowledge onto the children. And then your children, around 18, 17, 15, 20 plus, turn to you and say, I want to make my mistakes. I want to know how it is. You did when you were young. You used to do. And then you say, yes, my child, I used to. But it went wrong with me. Look what happened to me. It didn't work for me. So, you shouldn't do. Don't do like your mother, like your father. I made a mistake. I'm teaching you a better path. Does the children want to listen? No, they don't. Then you don't go to go to the Bible to observe this. The people don't learn with history. In the Bible itself, one of the reasons God put this testimony in writing in the Holy Scriptures for us is that no one can say, I didn't know. This is something new. This is novelty. No, it is written in the Holy Scriptures. When you look at the Old Testament, the Old Testament is full of examples, stories that are repeated today. When you see, for example, the people of Israel in Egypt, the Hebrew people, they started well in Egypt when Joseph was Egypt's governor and started to multiply and prosper. Straight after that multiplication, that exponential growth in Egypt, they have abandoned the covenant with God. They forgot. They were leaning on the fact that they had a governor, Joseph, who favored them. They thought like this, we will never be mistreated here. Look at that, the governor is Hebrew. We have Pharaoh's favor. But when they grew and multiplied and abandoned the fear of the Lord, then things turned around quite quickly. A new Pharaoh came up 
and been afraid with the growth of the Hebrews enslaved them. And isn't this what is happening with the human beings too? When they grow, when they prosper, when they multiply, when they are in misery, they remember God. But when they start to grow, they settle for that. And they forget God. And they concern too much with their prosperity and conquests. And on their many victories, in idleness, in abundance, in greed, they fall for many wrong things. They forget God. They forget what is right. They start to do everything wrong and they bring disgrace to their lives, as it happened to the people in Egypt when they found themselves as slaves again, when they found themselves in a hard situation and they cried out to God and Moses came, as you know the story. And nowadays this happened again. Many who are living well, once they were people of faith who sought for God, who feared God, they attended the church, people who did what was right, and then they started to prosper. And today they left behind all that they've learned to enjoy their victories and success. So what will happen to them? Certainly, it will happen what always happens, a tragedy, a problem, a situation, a disease comes, that money cannot do anything about it, a tragedy that caught the person by surprise and when they are hitting rock bottom once again they say, help me God. History repeats itself, you are following the series Kings, see that everything happening to David is repeated today. I will just speak about a small part of it. You are seeing the situation of the son of David named Absalom. What does Absalom want to do? Absalom grew up revolted against his father. My father was not fair. My father didn't do what he should. He was not a good father. Then I will take the throne for myself. I want the throne of my father. Even if I have to kill my father, I will, but I will take his throne for me, because I can be a better king than him. Then Absalom placed this obsession in his head that he would take the throne of his father. Then he tried, and it went wrong. He managed for a moment, but after all went wrong. He died for his own vanity, caught by his hair. The hair, which was his vanity. The hair, which was his glory. The Bible says that there was no man as handsome as Absalom, that his hair shone, that before today's products, he already passed oil on his hair with a mix that will make his hair to shine in the sun. And guess how did he die? Caught by his hair in a tree. But this story repeats itself today. Absalom today symbolizes the human being. The human being who revolts against God. The human being who says, God doesn't exist, because if he did, he would help me. I wouldn't be suffering as I am. Just as Absalom revolted against David, the human being revolts against God. God is not good. I am God. I will rule my life. I will not follow God. Then the human being take God's throne for themselves, and they want to be God. They sit on the throne of God and say, I will rule my life. I don't want to know about God because he didn't help me. He was unfair with me. He failed me. So I will be my God. They don't do this consciously. And this is the point. Because if they knew, they wouldn't do it. This is what Solomon is doing. Story repeats itself. That which has been 
would be again. But the person does exactly that. I don't want to know about God. I rule my life. So they rebel against God. They kill their siblings when you see someone bad-mouthing another. We try to help the person and they speak ill of us. They don't kill physically, but they kill us with their words. Oh, you are like this, you are that. They kill, they murder the reputation, the character of those brethren, those brothers and sisters who are trying to help, just like Absalom killed Amon. So you see the story repeats itself. And the human being does not learn. So if you want to have wisdom in your life, what you must do? You need to look at the mistakes of the ancients your mistakes and the mistakes of others. Pay attention and don't repeat the proven history of what doesn't work. Why would you repeat a mistake that is proven that in the end it leads you to suffer? Instead, repeat the story that worked. Because just as the Bible is filled with stories that went wrong, there are also stories that worked. Be intelligent, be wise and learn from what worked. Learn from the mistakes that are recorded and also the successes. And like this, you will be wise in whatever you do. And you won't have to repeat the mistakes of others to know that it doesn't work. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.